try harder. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Morning Devotions with the Community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Robert and I will serve as leader today. If you are new to our service, please know that you're welcome to participate fully. We are recording the service so that others can access it at a time that is convenient for them. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us praise our God who has given us life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Let us rejoice then even in our distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. O oh God, you have claimed us as your own and called us from our darkness into the light of your day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Blessed are you, God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the loving reign of the risen Christ. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Amen. Blessed be God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. This week, we will read from the story of Saul's conversion found in chapter nine of Acts. We read this story a couple of weeks ago uh, in our uh, reading on Sunday. Um, but we didn't really spend any time with it. So I thought uh, it would be good to kind of delve more deeply into the story uh, and see how that works on our hearts and what that teaches us uh, for our faith journey. So we begin with uh, chapter 9, verses 1 through 9 of Acts. So we're going to listen uh, first for a word or a phrase that... Uh, uh, interests us or perks our curiosity or uh, startles us. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. <clears throat> Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. So what do we hear in that, a word or a phrase? The reply came, I am Jesus. I don't remember in scripture Jesus identifying himself like that afterwards. They heard the voice but saw no one. A light from heaven flashed around him. Breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. Three days he was without sight. Okay. 
Good, lots of grist in this reading. And we're going to read it again, and this time um, do whatever helps you to uh, uh, enter more deeply into the scripture. Close your eyes, uh, read along, uh, listen uh, deeply, uh, breathe deeply, uh, but uh, be aware of what feelings this brings up for you. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. What are the feelings that you have hearing this reading? I think I feel two things. One thing with whatever was going on with this flash of light and this voice, I'd be astonished, but I'd also be very fearful. I'd be very scared. <laughs> uh, answer with you, Betsy, confused. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing Paul on the ground after this happens and imagining what's going through his whole self. I stand with his uh, companions and I hear the voice and I would be shocked and amazed and bewildered, all of those. Mostly I feel fear here. I feel fear of this um, virulent, uh, radical, um, desire to hurt the disciples of Jesus, the heretics, um, you know, to bring them down to Jerusalem. And I feel fear as something completely unexpected happens. And then fear as I realize I'm blind and can't, can't see and don't have any idea what to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm caught up in fear in this. For not eating or drinking for three days, he must have been in fear. All right, let's hear it one more time. And this time, uh, let's uh, listen for what this passage has to say to us for today or for this week. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground 
and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days, he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. So what does this offer us to, to take into the day or into the week? It offers to me to be aware. I don't think I'm going to see flashes of light, but to be aware that Jesus is around us um, in people, um, in getting to know people and to not breathe threats and murder, obviously. <laughs> um, but just being aware of the world around me. Um, I'm thinking about the fasting, like uh, not that he had choice to fast, but maybe the fasting without eating for a few days, he could see clearer. I think Thank Mike you. was right. He was terrified. I think that, I mean, you know, when I get really super duper upset about something, I can barely eat or drink. And, and I'm wondering about the men that were there traveling with him that then, you know, guided him to safety. What, what were they thinking? Yeah. My overall enthusiasm for persecuting disciples of Jesus would drop radically. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's, so it's what's the impact of the, those around us when something, you know, we may have a change of heart or, you know, fear, what, yeah. I think the message that comes up for me out of this, and, and this is something I'm really noticing in our time with uh, the book of Acts, mm -hmm. is this theme of trust and of uh, faith. And uh, that Paul would uh, get up, go into the city as, as Jesus instructs him, as this voice instructs him, uh, and just wait. And um, you know, not, not that there appears to be very much else that he could do, but, but um, there's, there's a faithfulness about uh, his response here, I, I feel. Yeah, he's, he's waiting for someone to tell him what to do, and how long would that take? You wouldn't know. This is a man who has, is powerful. Um, I bet he's very demanding of people around him, knows what he knows, and believes what he believes, and suddenly all that is taken away from him. You know, it's a tremendous deconstruction. I see that God was very merciful. And that after striking him down and letting him wait for a while, he came to him in the way he did and lifted him up. Yeah, that's a great his story. Disciple. As, as we really spend time with it this week, um, I, I think you all have a better appreciation for Paul by the end of the week. Any other thoughts? I want to know why Saul was chosen. Mm. Good question. I no. guess I'm fearful if I were ever to be chosen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Well, it's, it's in complete um, harmony with all of the Old Testament prophets who uh, uh, seem unlikely in, in the prophetic role that God asked them to take on. That's true. Just don't breathe threats and murder against the disciples. That's right. No good is going to come of that. <laughs> and there was, I still go back to the people around him. He was influential and he had people that 
he could affect change around him regardless of the situation. It's because of his power that he was picked. Yeah. I'm still fascinated by the, the people that were traveling with him. Definitely. Yeah. So look around those people that are traveling with you too, Carol and Robert. Okay. I always like engaging with people that, you know, I've never met and yeah. just learning about the world. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, let us continue. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? <coughs> I'll do the first one. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. <coughs> <coughs> Glorify the Lord, you angels, and all powers of the Lord. O heavens and all waters above the heavens, sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. <coughs> Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, every shower of rain and fall of dew, all winds and fire and heat. <coughs> I'm sorry. Would you like me to take over? No, I'm good. <clears throat> Winter and summer glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O oh chill and cold, drops of dew and flakes of snow, frost and cold, ice and sleet. Glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O oh nights and days, O oh shining light and folding darkness. Storm clouds and thunderbolts glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Affirmation of faith. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us offer our intercessions, petitions, and thanksgivings. May we live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May all people receive the good news of Christ's victory. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May those born to new life in the waters of baptism know the power of Christ's resurrection. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May those who suffer pain and anguish find healing and peace in the compassion of Christ. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May we be united in Christ's undying love with all those who have passed through the gates of death. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. We have intercessions and thanksgivings this morning. For Ed, Susan, Mary, Phyllis, and Jerry. For Mike and Terry. For safe travels for Carol and Robert. <clears throat> and also safe travels for George and Jane Brenza this week.
for Dina as she recovers uh, from COVID and as she prepares to begin her sabbatical. And for Jennifer, as she prepares to take on greater responsibilities. Holy Shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice so that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house, where we celebrate with you forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation and gathering our prayers and praises into one. Let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen.